Hello, everybody. Welcome to Western Michigan University. Welcome to the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences Western Wednesday webinar. Uh, we're excited to be here. Um, not excited to be under the current circumstances with the quarantine and everything that's going on, uh, but we are excited to be able to come to you today and speak about our college, speak about our programs, uh, and talk about uh, the future of our college. Um, let me get something started for you really quick here. There we go. Hopefully you guys can see this. My WMU folks, can you nod if, I, if you can? Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So my name is Scott Conant. I am the Outreach and Recruitment Manager for the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences. Uh, I've been working here for a lot of years. I'm a two-time graduate of Western Michigan University, uh, and uh, I'm proud to work here. Uh, my family and I love this area. We love this university. Uh, we also love to go to, uh, to, uh, to concerts in the summertime. Hopefully we'll get to this summer, but not likely, but soon we will. Um, and once we get started here, uh, I wanna talk about, hopefully the, all the knowns that we have, but also address some of the unknowns. So you'll have the option to ask a lot of questions today. Uh, there's a chat feature down at the bottom. Feel free to uh, ask some questions as we go through that. There's also a Q&A section. So that's for very direct questions if you wanna ask those too. Now, I'm not alone today. I brought some of our students along with us, so I'm gonna ask that they unmute themselves. And we'll start with Debbie, if you wanna introduce yourself. Yeah, hi, I'm Debbie Zernikowski, and I am a senior studying chemical engineering. Um, I am a super active member of a student organization here called AKI, which is the American Institute of Chemical Engineers. Um, it's really great to be involved, and I'm excited to hear what you guys uh, wanna know. Great. Uh, Jillian. Hi, I'm Jillian Bright. Uh, I guess now I'm a sophomore uh, studying electrical engineering. Uh, and one activity I do outside of classes is marching band. Outstanding. And Marie? Hi, my name is Marie. Um, I am a senior studying electrical engineering. Um, I'm from Battle Creek. Michigan, and I will be on the Society of Women Engineers chapter executive board in the fall. So that's what I'm doing right now. Outstanding. All right. So uh, as we go through this, you're going to hear a lot from me, but at the end, you'll have an opportunity to ask our current students some questions and uh, students feel free to add anything that you like uh, as we get through this together. All right. So let's talk about a few things. First off, what distinguishes us at the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences? Well, all of our programs are fully ABET accredited. And for those of you who are still doing uh, college search, you know that uh, this is a very important factor in what you should be looking for in a future university to get an engineering degree. ABET is the accrediting standard for North America, and we are proud to have been accredited for a number of years now, and we continue to get reaccredited. So we're excited about that. We have a lot of uh, design, build, and present experiences. Um, as you know, engineers tend to design and build things, but we also get you to present things too, okay? Uh, we don't expect that you're gonna be a perfect speaker. Most people don't love public speaking, um, but we're gonna get you to the point where you can feel comfortable communicating your ideas. And we need you to communicate those ideas because your ideas are what's gonna change our world moving forward. So we're gonna help you get there. We have a lot of hands-on experience opportunities, and I know that every single university you've ever looked at has said that they are hands-on, okay? Uh, and we are too, uh, but we're gonna prove it, and I'm gonna show you how in just a second. And we also have a STEP program for student support that is uh, pretty robust and provides a whole network of resources for the students to be successful in that first year. Now, we have something very unique here called the Parkview Campus. This is our own campus. We're about four miles away, from Western Michigan University's main campus in Kalamazoo. We are part of a business technology and research park that we share with over 40 companies. And so it provides a unique atmosphere here. You see the picture on the bottom, that is our building, that's Floyd Hall. That's a hundred million dollar facility. We have over 75 labs. So when we say that we're hands-on, this is how we prove it. We have an entire campus dedicated to this kind of work. Now, that said, we do not offer housing out here at the Parkview campus. Uh, the, the companies that share this with us probably don't want student housing over here, but we want you to live on main campus, live in the engineering house, which I'll talk about in a bit, and uh, utilize our shuttle. We have a bus that connects the two campuses. It's on a, 
on a consistent loop, usually every 30 minutes, uh, all day, Monday through Friday. So uh, it's never a problem to get over here. So let's talk about our programs real quick. First off, we have 15 different programs at the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences. And here are the engineering programs. We have your traditional programs that you're gonna find at most every university. Mechanical engineering, chemical engineering, civil engineering, and electrical engineering tend to be cornerstones of most every program. And uh, they are here as well. They tend to be our larger programs. That said, we have some very unique programs as well. We have aerospace engineering, which is one of only two aerospace programs in the state of Michigan. We're very proud of that. We have uh, industrial and entrepreneurial engineering, which was the first accredited and recognized entrepreneurial engineering program in the country. And we've been doing that for a number of years now as well. We also have a program that is very unique called paper engineering. Now we have one of only three majors anywhere in the US. Uh, and it's a, it's a pretty amazing program. It's very, very unique. And if you're undecided about what direction to take your engineering career, be sure to look at that program because it incorporates a lot of different elements from the different majors that we offer. Once we get past the engineering programs, we go into things like our applied sciences. So we have engineering technology programs, engineering design technology. Uh, for those of you who took a CAD class and fell in love with computer-aided design, this is the program for you. It's an incredible program, all about rapid prototyping and uh, aided design. Uh, engineering management technology is a hybrid between engineering and business. So you get a foundation in the engineering principles, but then we layer in the business and marketing principles as well from the business college. Now we also have manufacturing engineering technology, and those focus on two primary different areas. One is our plastics processing side, and the other one is our metal casting side, where we have a poured cast metal area, and we have a working foundry right here in the building. So it's pretty unique. And then finally, we have computer science, which is right now our fastest growing program. From that, we are just now announcing a brand new major that will begin in the fall called cybersecurity. And so that is going to be closely aligned with computer science, but it will be its own standalone program. And then we also have graphic and printing science. Now, you notice that some of these programs have an asterisk next to that. And the reason is because these are the programs that offer an accelerated degree track. Now, this is not something that you have to select yet. Uh, it's usually something that by the end of your sophomore year, you may have identified with your academic advisor as a pathway for you. But what it allows you to do is take graduate level coursework in your senior year as an undergraduate student. You will pay undergraduate rates, but those credits will count toward both your bachelor's and a potential master's degree. So that once you earn that master's degree, you only have one additional year and you could complete your master's degree as well. Okay, so we have those options for you. Again, not something you choose yet, but it's certainly nice to know that that's an option in the future. All right, so let's talk about math. Uh, mathematics is the language of engineering. And for those of you who are interested in one of our engineering degrees, you get to go through calculus four. Uh, if you're looking at one of our technology or applied science degrees, you're looking at uh, taking maybe Calc 1 or 2, okay? So there is some uh, curriculum differences there. But this is where we start. We would love for you to start at the Calculus 1 level or higher. And we start by looking at either your ACT or SAT score. If you have a math subscore of 27 on the ACT or a math subscore of 640 on the SAT, then you're in Calc 1. And that's great. There's nothing more for you to do. You're, you're wonderful. Uh, if you're not there yet, take advantage of the Alex Math Placement Assessment. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. Or if you're taking an AP or IB course, or if you're dual enrolled in another institution, we will take a look at those assessment scores and place you accordingly. Okay, so for instance, if you are taking an AP Calculus AB course, and you take the assessment, and you get a four or a five on that assessment, you will earn your Calc 1 credit already and probably be placed into a higher level math uh, area. But you have to take the assessment, okay? And so we'll, we'll cover that as we move forward. I do wanna focus on the Alex Math Placement Exam because this is very important. For those of you who are coming in below that Calculus 1 level, it doesn't mean you can't start with us. Uh, it just means that we have some more assessment to do to make sure we get you where you need to be and be successful when you start with our curriculum. 
So the Alex Math Assessment is a free tool for you to use. If you're admitted to Western, uh, you can access the code by going to this website, wmich.edu backslash or forward slash step forward slash Alex, A-L-E-K-S. Now this is, uh, it, it affords you the ability to work at your own pace and at your own place. And then when you are ready by doing these modules, you will take this assessment. It will give you an immediate score. So you know right away where you're placed. You can take this multiple times. So if you take it once and you don't do well, keep working at it, keep working on those modules, and then you can take it again. And we will always take that highest score whenever you achieve it, okay? This must be done before you meet with your academic advisor at orientation. And orientation is coming up in June, okay? So if you haven't done it yet, make sure you go to that website, take a look at the code, and then get on that site and, and get started with those modules, okay? And we can ask, answer some questions about that at the end of this too. Okay, uh, if you are doing the AP assessments, um, and I believe those are coming up very soon in the next couple of weeks here for AP and IB, our code, for WMU is 1902, so they can automatically send us the scores uh, when they're in. Um, if they come to you in July, you can call the advising office and update your placement accordingly uh, with those scores, okay? All right, so let's talk about that STEP program. Uh, we started this program about 12 years ago, and what we've seen from this is a, a massive increase in our ability to retain students and make sure that they're successful in these programs. So we focused on these academic support programs and the primary tool initially was to ease the transition from high school work to college work, okay? And it starts with our free tutoring services. We have what are called student success centers. These student success centers uh, provide free tutoring for almost every subject in math and science and engineering, especially in years one and two. And these learning centers are open until midnight most nights. So if you're struggling with a chemistry exam or if you have a project in physics or something in your engineering design course and you need help, go on down to the student success centers. We have three of them. Two of them are on main campus. One of them is over here at Floyd Hall. Okay, um, But it's important to know that you can get help. We have step student cohorts and what that means is that let's say, um, let's say your name is Debbie and you're coming in as a first year student ready to start in calculus one in chemical engineering we're going to start you off with 20 to 24 other incoming first year students in chemical engineering and put you all in that calc one class together and then we're going to find four or five other classes to put you all together as well so we're going to take this university that's about 23,000 strong and we're going to distill this down to 20 to 25 students who are starting where you are with their math level and also want the same major that you have, and we're gonna put you in those classes together so that community is gonna be there for you. And from there, we know that you're gonna have study groups that form, friendships that form, uh, some familiarity with campus that will form through those processes. And so we're excited every year when we get to place uh, everybody in that first year. And we also do things like early intervention. So let's say uh, you're not doing well in that first semester. Uh, or that second semester, and we recognize it maybe before you do, we may be calling you in to just have a discussion about all the resources that are available for you to make sure that you're comfortable and that you are, are aware of all the help that's here, okay? And then we do a lot of fun social events. We'll have a big uh, cookout at the beginning of the year. Uh, this is run by an amazing individual. Her name is Anitra Grice, and we are all better for knowing Anitra. She's just incredible in every way and uh, she will take very good care of all of you. And um, yeah, she's, she's the perfect person for this. So let's talk about those student success centers that I mentioned. Some of them are daytimes, uh, most of them are nighttime options, okay? And they are staffed by current students. So these are students who have just taken and successfully completed the courses that you are now going to take. And so they have a real recent uh, understanding of what the expectations are in that class. And if you yourselves do really good in those classes, you could be hired on as a tutor as well. The key is, is sometimes if you're in high school, it's hard to ask for help. And there may be a stigma attached or there may not be a very clear path as to how. But once you get to college, the expectation is that you ask for help and you seek assistance. And that is a sign of maturity and growth. And that's what we wanna see from a young professional 
about to earn a degree and move into a professional career. Uh, and so um, get into the habit of asking for help. And that's what these centers are here for, okay? Uh, I talked about those steps, I talked about the cohorts already. Let's talk about the engineering house. Uh, we have an option for you to live in Eldridge Hall in the engineering house. This is an option, it is not a requirement, but we do encourage all of our first year engineering students uh, to live in this residence hall. It features a 24 seven computer lab that's a direct clone of the lab we have over here at the Parkview campus. Um, and then uh, you see we have one of the student success centers located right there in the building. So you could just hop on down in your pajamas and get whatever help you need, okay? Uh, so it's nice, it's conveniently located right behind the brand new Valley Dining Center that opened up just over a year ago. Uh, so I would encourage you to do that. That said, you don't have to. You can, you can choose to live anywhere you want on campus or off campus. We don't require our students to live on campus their first year, okay? And I'll let our students talk about their housing experiences a little bit later on. Um, but one thing we do know is that our students who choose to live in these residence halls their first year have a higher grade point average at the end of that year than our students who choose to live elsewhere, okay? So it's encouraging to see that what we're doing works and we definitely encourage our students to join them. So the return on your investment is pretty significant, okay? This is a five-year starting uh, average or starting salary average, and I'm seeing that I need to update this a little bit because it's a couple years old now. Um, now, the reason to look at this is not so you see that paper engineering is the longest line, okay? All the lines are pretty good. So if you're a recent graduate, you're gonna walk out into your career, that's your average starting salary, okay? I know students who are currently wrapping up their junior year or just wrapped up their junior year still have an entire year to go and have already been offered a job to start full time upon graduation next year. So we're excited for those students too. Uh, we have a 94% post-secondary success rate. What that means is our students upon graduation have jobs to go off uh, and, and start their careers with or they've decided to move into a master's or PhD program, but they are continuing to pursue what they're passionate about. And on the right-hand side there, you see one of our former student ambassadors, Jacob, uh, is a wonderful student in aerospace engineering, is now uh, on track at Purdue uh, to get his master's and he's considering a PhD as well. So we'll see where that goes. And you can work anywhere in the world, and our students do. We have alumni, all over the world at some of the largest corporations. Here are some of the uh, companies that have come to our campus in the last couple of years to recruit our students. And so the, the reach of Western Michigan University is growing and the profile of our graduates is, is pretty impressive. Now we start here on campus with internship and co-op experiences. Most of our students will do at least one internship. Many will do more than one. Um, last summer, our average student made $20 an hour. We do not do unpaid internships through the College of Engineering. And so uh, on the high end, we had students making $32, $33 an hour. And so uh, we help you, uh, beginning your first year, identify those opportunities and connecting you with our career employment services uh, representative here in the building. <clears throat> what they provide are on-site services. Um, so they're here in our advising office. Uh, you get to meet with our career advisor and her staff. Uh, they also do these cafe critiques. So if you're working on a resume, you can just drop in during lunchtime and sit down with somebody and get a review on the spot of your resume. You can also set up appointments to work on resume writing or interviewing skills, or if you are negotiating salary or benefits packages upon graduation, it's a great idea to sit down with somebody to learn how to negotiate those things, okay? but they're gonna work with you starting on day one. One of the big things that they do is called the Engineering Expo. Now, last year we had over 120 companies in our building. They take over the whole place. Uh, and uh, they, they wanna recruit you. They wanna recruit our students, not just the graduating seniors, but even the first year students. They wanna to get to know you because they may hire you as an intern or just get on their radar for the future. Um, and they take over our building. We give our students the day off class that day so that they can go and participate in this. And so that happens every fall. I just wanna let you know that our focus is on you. We have a lot of faculty engagement, 
Um, and uh, what's nice about having our own campus over here is that our faculty can't escape <laughs> to other buildings. They're here, they're here with you. So it's not uncommon at all to see uh, a professor sitting in the, um, uh, in the dining hall uh, and sitting in the lunchroom with some of her students to talk about what they're working on or to talk about research. Um, it's not uncommon at all for us to be giving a tour and have a professor open up their lab and say, come on in, let me show you what we're working on. Uh, so it's a really cool uh, engagement that we have with our faculty here in the building. We have a really cool thing called Innovation Day. And on Innovation Day, we do a lot of different things. We have students who will uh, produce their own projects and their own um, uh, plans uh, and, and designs for new products. They pitch them and kind of like a mini pitch competition. And then we also include some of the area youth uh, through the high schools and middle school programs here as well. Uh, we will pick winners and they go on to the state competition and uh, hopefully win some money there as well. So. Uh, we have a lot of fun here in getting our students engaged and involved. Now this will all culminate in your senior design day. As senior design, you will present your research. Usually it's research that you've been doing for about a year um, and, and you'll be faculty led, but this research could be funded from uh, the federal government, state governments, or any industry partners that we have. And we have a lot out there. And so here's a team of our aerospace engineers. In the back there is our provost and uh, Dr. Jennifer Bott. So we get everybody involved. It's a big community day to get everybody here and celebrate our seniors as they present their research. And then we know that you can't learn engineering by reading about it or by watching somebody else do it. You actually have to do it. And so you learn engineering by doing engineering. And we do that through our class projects, through our design build competitions, through our student organizations, our research, our students get out and do things. And so we're excited about some of the things that our students do. Let's talk about our student organizations. Now the university has over 400 student organizations to join. These are extracurricular activities that you do outside of coursework. Uh, now for engineering, we have just over 30 of them that are active right now. And so whether you want to be in a professional society or you want to be uh, like on a racing team, and here's some pictures there of some of the teams that we have going on, there's never, um, there's never a reason for you to be bored, right? There's plenty for you to get involved with. And again, I'll let our students discuss some of that. So I'm gonna highlight a few of them. We have our American Society of Civil Engineers, one of our larger uh, organizations here, and they compete every year in the concrete canoe competition. And you see that they, build and cast and race uh, these concrete canoes every year against other universities. We also have the steel bridge competition, uh, which you see there on the right. We have the American Institute for Aeronautics and Astronautics. This is AIAA primarily. This is aerospace engineers, but it's open to anybody who wants to join. They have a couple different areas. They have a design build fly team where they take a drone and they go race that or complete missions with that as the competition requires. Uh, we also have a rocketry team. And here you see us, I took uh, five or six students with me last year to the uh, EAA Air Venture uh, event in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, which is the largest air show in North America. And so we got to go and represent Western Michigan University, and they got to meet and greet uh, with members from um, all over the world, and which is a lot of fun. We have a cool program called Engineers Without Borders. This is an organization that will travel internationally to help solve problems. This is a team of ours from last year who got to go to Nicaragua uh, to help with a water filtration uh, problem that, the, that this village was having. Now we have our Western Aerospace Launch Initiative, WALI, which is really cool. They are building CUBE satellites. And the CubeSat uh, program um, hopefully will have a Bronco satellite in orbit in the next few years. We've been working with NASA and Naval Aerospace to get this done, but our students also go out to uh, satellite conferences to learn how to build satellites and all the different missions that you need to accomplish with them. Oops, skipped ahead. We have our Society for Automotive Engineers, which of course is our Formula Race Car team and our Mini Baja team. So if you like racing and you wanna be a member of those areas, uh, you can definitely get involved, get dirty if you want. And then we have our Sunseeker solar car team as well. This is a really cool program. We compete in the North American Solar Challenge uh, every year um, and uh, every other year, I should say, because 
in one summer it'll be a short track race and the next summer it'll be a cross-country challenge and so that will take you 1500 or more miles it's an endurance race and this is a car that is designed and built and tested and raced by our students and so anybody can join this team uh, and, and get engaged that way now those are just a handful and i've got my student members who are here who are like where's my organization I can't get to all of them because we have so many of them, <laughs> but I'm going to let you guys talk about them in just a second. Um, so there's, there's always a way to get involved. And one of the things I want you to know is that our faculty stay involved through these activities as well. Okay. And so there's a lot to get in, to get involved with. Now, for those of you who are looking to come next fall, you may be interested in buying yourself a new laptop. I would always encourage a new laptop. Um, but we don't require it unless you're going into computer science. So here are the recommendations. Uh, and you can find this on our technology website as well. Um, these may be updated through the summer, but they haven't up, been updated in a, in a little while. Uh, generally speaking, they'll bring what you have. Okay. If you're going to buy something new, do not purchase the Microsoft Office Suite. Or at least you don't have to because we will provide that for free. Okay. We will make whatever you bring works. So if you have a PC, or a Macintosh, it doesn't matter, we're gonna make it work for you, okay? All right, here is my information here, and that will be provided for you um, down the line as well. Let me stop my share there. And let's see, we've got 32 of you here. Let's open it up for any questions that you guys have. All right, so I'm looking at Alex and Blake and Ethan. Colton is here. Hi, Colton, how you doing? Parker's there, Michael, good to see you guys. All right, Sheila, thank you for joining us. Trenton, I'm calling you out until you start asking questions. All right, so while we're waiting for some questions, what I'd like to do is invite our student ambassadors to talk about the organizations that they're in. I know Debbie mentioned Aki, and I'm gonna let her talk about what Aki got to do uh, in the last year or two. Uh, so like Scott said, I, my name is Debbie um, and I'm super involved in AKI, uh, which is the American Institute of Chemical Engineers. One of the big things we do is actually go to competitions and compete um, against other schools. Um, so we build a car that's chemically powered, has a chemical reaction for a start and a chemical reaction for a stop, and it has to fit inside a shoebox. And um, when we show up to competitions, uh, they give us an amount of water we have to carry and a distance we have to go, and then we have to adjust like our reactions accordingly to win. So that's a lot of the fun stuff, like the hands-on that we do. And then the other part of it is a lot of like professional connections and bringing in companies to talk to you. Uh, one year we went, I think this was actually last April, we went to Pfizer and they gave us a plant tour, uh, which was super cool. Uh, we got to talk to a lot of their different engineers that had graduated either from um, Western or other universities. So we do a lot of stuff like that. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, Landon has a great question. What percentage of aerospace engineering students graduate in four years? Awesome question. Landon, if you start off in Calculus One, your first semester, what we're finding is that just over half the students are finishing in a straight four years. If you're starting uh, in pre-calculus or Algebra Two, uh, then it's gonna take you a little bit longer. On average, our students across the board take five years to graduate. Um, and a lot of that is due to the fact that they do internships, they do a lot of research, and that means that they may be limited in the types of classes they can take over the summer. Plus, this is a challenging curriculum. It may not be advisable to take 18 credit hours per semester, depending on how your classes are stacking up. Um, so keep that in mind. What we consider on time is different for everybody. It really depends on where you start uh, and how you're prog uh, progressing through the program. So I hope that answers your question, Landon. Uh, Ethan has a question about taking an AP test after he's set to schedule classes. Yes. Okay, so Ethan wants to know if the AP scores come in after you already register for your classes for the fall, can we change those? Absolutely. You will uh, call in and talk to your academic advisor, update your AP score accordingly, and we will rearrange your, um, uh, your schedule accordingly, all right? Uh, Parker has a question, and I'm going to let the students answer this. 
for both of you, or for, for both questions. So let's hear from Marie and Jillian. Uh, what is your major and how do you decide on it? And then what is the biggest challenge you faced moving from high school to college? <laughs> and be careful here. What was the biggest mistake you made when you made that transition? Uh, I guess I'll go first. Uh, my major is electrical engineering, and I actually didn't come into Western for electrical. I started as mechanical, uh, and after a couple weeks, I realized that wasn't what I really wanted to do. And so what's nice about Western is a lot of the classes, especially your freshman year, end up being very similar for, all, like, for a lot of the engineering majors. So you don't have to make up that many classes when you switch. Like I only had to make up one, switching from mechanical to electrical. and. Uh, my main thing that I decided on it was it, I found that it was something that I really enjoyed and it's what I want to do with my professional career. And okay, then I guess, Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't know if you want to. <laughs> uh, my biggest challenge from uh, high school to college was deciding what I wanted to do. And the biggest mistake was starting as a mechanical, but it wasn't like, it wasn't anything I had to, it wasn't actually that big of a mistake. <laughs> That's it for me. Thank you. All right, Marie. So I also switched from mechanical to electrical after my first year. Um, I guess I picked mechanical because like I loved engineering. I took like an engineering class in high school and it was just, I figured like mechanical was broad. I could do so many different things with it, which is true. But then when I got to school, I like talked to like computer club and all these like, um, IEEE guys, which IEEE is Institute for Electrical and Electronics Engineers, and I just loved what they were doing with their projects. And they're like, you know, you'd only like lose one class if you switched right now. And so I was like, oh, oh. So um, it wasn't too bad. I love electrical. Um, so yeah, switch to electrical. Kidding. <laughs> switch to what you want to do, and the earlier you do it, the better, and the less you have to worry about it affecting you. I'd say my biggest mistake I made, my biggest challenge was honestly over committing. Like I thought I could be like in part of like five different organizations and do marching band, which is what I was set out to do. And then uh, it just got to be a lot. And I had to learn how to reorganize myself because my high school teachers are really good at organizing the class. And then I realized that college professors are not as, um, they're just not like high school teachers. You have to do a lot more of it yourself. So once I got the hang of that, um, I did a lot better in my classes, and um, I started to succeed. Excellent. Okay, uh, a couple more questions have come in. Josh is asking about a special process for transferring from a two-year college. Uh, it's, it's just a different process. You go through the admissions office and you would submit a transfer application and then have your two-year institution submit official transcripts. We have to evaluate those credits, and at that point, once you're admitted, those credits will be applied toward your curriculum here at Western. Um, you can also find transfer guides on our website. So if you are at a community college in, Mich in Michigan, for instance, you can pull up really quickly how those credits transfer and what classes they count towards. So you can start tracking your progress right away. When in doubt, contact the advising office here for the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences, okay? Um, and then Sean is asking about um, how did you adjust switching from the traditional K-12 format and those classes to the classes specifically required for engineering? And so rather than have the bell ring and move you from one location to another like you do all through you know, early elementary through high school, how is that difference in college, especially for engineering? Debbie, you want to take this one? Uh, I actually wanted to say something about the two-year transition mm. period. Uh, I went to a community college before I came to Western, and the best advice I have is get in touch with um, an advisor at your community college and tell them that you are planning on transferring, and then also get in touch with um, uh, an advisor at Western um, to make sure that like the classes that you m might be planning on taking or have taken are going to actually transfer over. Thank you. Is there another question? Uh, how did you uh, transition from the K-12 format? And any of you guys can answer this if you want. I don't think I'm the best person to answer this because I went <laughs> to college for two well, years first. So. Jillian is fresh out of the K-12 format. 
uh, and just finished her first year of college. So Jillian, do you wanna provide some insight? Yeah, so I would say the biggest difference that I found is that you're more, you're more responsible for remembering when your classes are and like having to get there yourself, um, remembering tra transition times, like it's gonna take me 20 minutes to walk from the dorms to this class, actually being up and out by that time, I think is a lot different than hearing the bell ring, okay, time for next class. And then I'd say another difference would be sometimes you have like one class and then like one and a half or two hours in between before you have your next class. And so like sometimes finding what to do with those two hours uh, is a little tricky. All right. All right, I'm trying to keep uh, up on these questions here. Um, where'd my screen go? There we go. Okay. Uh, Ryan is asking, when do you take the math placement test? And so Ryan, I'm gonna share this again so that, uh, to make sure that you have it, maybe I'll share it. All right. I want you to make sure you see this website here, wmich.edu step Alex slash step slash Alex. Uh, you can take this assessment now and you can begin that right away. And so you don't have to wait until you arrive for orientation or until you register for orientation. You can start doing this right now. And I would encourage that anybody who is looking to, um, to get their math placement set up before they show up in June, which you have to do, uh, to get working on this right now. Okay. And we'll be sending out more information about this. But this website is a tremendous resource for you. So I encourage you to go there. Okay. Uh, Keaton is asking about paper engineering uh, students doing an internship and co-op through the department and yes, absolutely. Uh, we don't do a lot of co-ops here at, the, uh, at uh, the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences. You have that option through mechanical engineering and you also have that option and it's actually a requirement through the paper engineering program. And so through that you will do a co-op and that's where, um, well they pay pretty well and they take good care of you there too. Uh, okay, Sean's asking a great question about how many credits do you recommend taking each year? Now, this is going to be individual uh, to you. And so some semesters, you can take 16, 17 credits. Other semesters, 12 credits. And 12 credits is the minimum that you need to be considered a full-time student. It's really going to be program specific, and it's also going to be based on where you are in that curriculum there may be times when you shouldn't be taking certain classes together just because of how rigorous they are. Um, and do any of my ambassadors want to talk about that? Marie, you are entering your senior year. Debbie, you are too. Uh, any insight as to how many credits per semester you should be taking? So I definitely think it depends on what classes you're taking. I've taken 15 credit semesters. I've taken 18 credit semesters. Um, and I, last semester I took 16 credits and it was the hardest semester I've ever taken. So um, really try to talk to other people who are kind of in your major to be like, hey, how awful are all of these classes going to be together? Uh, so you know like that you aren't taking like five of your most rigorous classes at the same time like I did this semester. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you survived and I'm glad, that's great. Uh, we have a great tool for our students called DegreeWorks so that you can track your progress in real time and see how you're doing on your progress toward degree. It also has a really cool feature called what if. So what if you want to change your major or what if you want to add a minor? Um, it will then lay out your next path and what that might look like for you. So uh, we have some tools available for you to, to kind of help you out. All right. Landon is asking if you have to uh, apply specifically to the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences? Uh, no, not, not on the front end. What you'll do is you'll indicate that on your application with the admissions office and they will send it over to us. So there's no separate application that you have to do on the front end, okay, if you're transferring in or starting as a first year student. All right, some of the other questions that are coming in on the Q&A. Do you have to take the Alex placement, placement test even if your SAT mass score is high enough? Parker, no, you do not. If you scored high enough with the SAT uh, math is a 640 or above, you do not have to take the Alex math placement exam, okay? Anything below that though, you will, all right? 
Um, Ethan is asking about how the computer science program at WMU compares to computer science programs of other schools. Unfortunately, none of our panelists are computer science students, um, but what I can tell you is that our faculty get to know our students. And as a research institution, they work hand in hand a lot, especially in computer science. Now, I don't get into the game of what is better, us or X school, uh, because it's very individual. I know that as a research-centered, accredited institution, our programs in computer science are gonna make you just as competitive in the career fields that you're looking at as any other program out there. And our computer science students go on to do some amazing things. And I know that's a workaround way of answering your question, um, but that's as close as I'm gonna to get to saying uh, that we're better than anybody else. But I think we're pretty darn good, okay? Um, Alex uh, is asking about Alex. <laughs> Alex is asking about the Alex assessment. For chemical engineering, uh, what's the requirement? Uh, you have to place into calculus one and on that website, um, it will actually tell you how that breakdown is. So let me share another screen with you real quick so you can see this. Okay, hopefully you guys can all see this. I've taken you to that website that I've been talking about. And if you move on down here, uh, it will ask, answer a lot of questions for you. It will tell you that you should spend five hours in the prep modules before you take the assessment. And then you can take it again if you don't do well, okay? It'll talk to you about all the rules. This is what you need. So you need to get a 76% or higher on the assessment piece to place into Calc 1. That is the requirement for chemical engineering or all the engineering, okay? Uh, programs that we have. Now, if you don't, don't worry. You can still start in Algebra 2 or Pre-Calculus. We can build a curriculum for you that will work, okay, and it will get you there. Keep in mind, you can also take classes over the summer at your local community college and transfer those credits in. So if you feel more comfortable taking calculus at the community college, talk to our advisors here and make sure that you're taking the right ones to get that done, okay? Hopefully, it answers that question. Alex is also asking when we schedule for classes. Now, if you are an incoming first year student, freshman for the fall, you will start registering for classes at orientation in June. If you are a transfer student, you can get all of your credits transferred and evaluated now and meet with your academic advisor to start that process as well. Okay, I wouldn't wait too much longer if you're transferring it. But if you're an incoming first year student, make sure you register for orientation and you get that uh, set up so that we can get your classes for you, okay? All right, Jason asked if internships are only held during the summer or are there options to have an internship during other semesters? An overwhelming majority are going to be in the summertime, okay? Because we want to make sure that you are here to, um, uh, to take a full load of classes. Now, some of them, however, have extended their offers. Uh, and so we've had students before who will go away for the summer and then before they start their fall, the company is saying, you know, if you stay with us through December, we're going to pay you X amount of dollars to do that. Uh, and it's, it, for some of them, it's, it's feasible to do that, and, and they much rather do that. So a majority of them are summer, but some can extend, and it's entirely up to the student and employer uh, how they work that out. At no point do we ever want to disadvantage the student, however, from keeping on track toward earning their degree. All right. I want to make sure I'm catching up on all of these questions. You guys are asking great ones. All right. Okay. So, um, okay. Michael's asking about uh, if your grades in high school were just okay for math, can you test up on the placement and get placed in the calculus your first year at WMU? Absolutely. Michael, that's exactly what the Alex math assessment's for. It allows you to practice and take modules and build on those skills so that when you take that assessment, you can bump right up to a level that you're ready to go uh, and be successful in. And so uh, don't be discouraged if, you're, if your grades were just okay, right? Uh, we value hard work and this Alex assessment is right there for you to do the work and earn your way in. And so please take advantage of that, all right? And then Samuel has asked a wonderful question um, that I'm gonna let our students answer. And so let's have Marie go first. The question is, what can we do now to help best prepare us for next year? <laughs> I'm gonna have to think about this one. 
I would say um, the most important thing would be to make sure that your math is strong. Like I know Scott talked a lot about math, but it really is um, used for like all your engineering classes. Like engineering is just really kind of applied math. And that's kind of what I've seen in my electrical engineering classes is you use a lot of math throughout. So the math is used to get you to understand and be able to do um, the engineering projects in your classes. And so it's really serious. And um, it's not enough to scare you or anything, but um, just sort of like, I would recommend just sort of like making sure that you have like a strong base. And um, yeah, that's the biggest thing I would say. Jillian? Uh, similar to that, I would just say make sure that you don't lose all of your school skills over the summer. So, like a lot of people want to take like this huge break and like I get it, trust me, that like you just want to chill over the summer. But it is nice, it's a good idea to look back over your math or your physics if you've taken it or chem or any of those science or just like core engineering classes that you have taken in high school. It's a good idea to look those over before you jump into your college levels. Oh, Debbie? Um, I think the thing that's kind of helped me the most is being able to like keep a planner really well. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe like start using Google Calendar or your planner or something and just making sure like you have you're writing things down because you do get a lot of homework and you get a lot of quizzes and exams and stuff like that. And the last thing you want is for something to sneak up on you. So get organized now. Okay, great. Thank you all. Okay, some more questions have been filtering in. Keaton is asking about the process for joining projects like Sunseeker. Uh, you can usually do that in the fall when you first arrive. We'll have a fall welcome week uh, where you'll get exposed to a lot of different areas. And then we always have a huge day over here called Passport Day uh, at the College of Engineering. You can come out here and kind of uh, get your hands dirty in a lot of different areas. And we have our student organizations here to recruit and uh, get you signed up. So you can definitely do that uh, when, you, when you arrive here in the fall. Um, Sheila asks a tremendous question. What is the gender ratio like in engineering? And I can tell you, it's not what you're seeing on the screen right now. Uh, it's probably the inverse. Uh, and I'm, you know what, ladies, I'm gonna let you guys talk about this because I think this is an important question and I am not the one to answer. I guess I'll start. Um, I, so I'm studying chemical engineering and we have kind of like a pretty large amount of females. I know a third of our um, students enrolled in chemical engineering are actually female. So you de definitely notice that you are one of few girls in the class, but it doesn't, it doesn't phase you after a while. You don't notice it at all. Marie, Jillian, anything to add? Oh, I just, as it's been mentioned, I just finished my first, uh, my first two semesters. So I would say in your beginning, there are obviously a lot more people in your classes, but I mean, it's not large classes, but even with that, it is uh, a majority of men over women, but it's not like we're not there. Like there, you do have a couple other girls in your class. So like, it's not, it's not uncommon. I would add that there is, um, yeah, there's a lot of guys, especially electrical engineering. I think we're one of like the lowest percentage of women, unfortunately. I have been the only one in my class. Sorry to tell you that, Jillian. <laughs> um, it's okay. <laughs> I would say my the favorite thing, the best thing I did was join Society of Women Engineers. We have a chapter, and um, I didn't stay with it just because like timing concerns, and I would like can't make the meetings and stuff. But like if you join the meetings, like you have a really good support group that'll do things like do a fashion show to like show you like how to dress for your first interview or something like, you know, advice that's not always centered towards the guys, but also like for us and like for me whose parents never had to do any of that stuff, it was really, really great to have some examples that I could learn off of. So I would highly recommend joining Society of Women Engineers or just join a really good friend group. And um yeah, that would really help you get through a lot of the rough moments. Thank you, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so I lived in Eldridge and uh, Eldridge has, as of last year, they had two, uh, two floors for that girls were placed on. 
uh, it was a girls and guys floor mix. Um, but because of I was on because I was on one of those floors, there were a lot of other girls on that floor with me. And so I've met a lot of my friends through there, girls and guys. Excellent. Uh, they mentioned the Society of Women Engineers, and I think this is absolutely vital because earlier in the in the presentation, I mentioned a, an amazing individual named Anitra Grice. She is the um, advisor for the Society of Women Engineers, and she also teaches a women in leadership seminar course for all first year students who want to take it. And it's, it's been a, an incredible thing to watch uh, this grow and watch what Anitra gets to do with these students. And she's been an amazing mentor uh, for a lot of them. So hopefully that helps with the question a little bit. We've got some more questions coming in. I want to make sure I, I capture as much as I can. Uh, there's a question about the coronavirus and I'm going to answer that at the end. We're, we'll have a little discussion about that. Uh, Michael's asking about signing up for orientation. It appears that it's going to be online. Yes, it is. And so you will be signing up for classes and picking your residence. You can pick your residence hall now. I should put that out there. You can go ahead and register for housing now. When you register for your orientation session, uh, you're registering for a time block that you will meet one-on-one -on -one virtually with your academic advisor. And they are going to build your academic schedule for you in the fall. Okay, so you will walk away from that session with your schedule for the fall. So that's what that's going to be like. Uh, it's, it's a new and unique experience for all of us. And so uh, make sure you get signed up because I know those time blocks are kind of filling up. So we want to make sure we get you taken care of, Michael. All right. Uh, Parker's asking about homework, homework load wise. What does it consist of? Papers, tests, other things? Students, what does homework look like for you guys? Um, so I know homework for like chemical engineering classes is very like problem based homework learning. Um, you're going to learn a lot like that, but majority of the time it's not going to be worth more than 15% of your grade. Um, I think a lot of it is either going to come from a project or some sort of or the tests or exams and quizzes. Um, I haven't had a whole lot of like crazy projects. Um, I know that next year I will have a whole bunch of crazy projects, but um, I know like as of right now, like I haven't had anything where it's like, oh, if I fail this project, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fail the class. And I haven't had any classes where homework is weighted so heavily that like, if I don't do a one work assignment, like I can't get an A or anything crazy like that. So it's not too much to worry about as long as you're on top of it and you're staying organized. Good. Jillian, you just wrapped up your first year. Um, how was it for you in terms of homework? Uh, I would expect, I mean, I didn't have the same uh, experience as Debbie because a lot of my classes were those general classes such as like chemistry one, physics one, calc one, like a lot of those are, a lot of your homework for those is studying for tests. Um, in a lot of cases, in some cases it is papers. Uh, not often though I have found, and occasionally it is just like online homework through, um, different types of programs that the teachers assign. Great. Uh, in that vein, we've got another question that just came in from Keaton about schedules uh, for the Honors College. And how do those differ from um, the other uh, students who are not in the Honors College? Jillian, were you in the Honors College? Can you speak to that at all? Yeah, um, so uh, one big difference for the Honors College is uh, as I believe they have an early orientation that students can sign up for classes. I don't know how that is working with Corona right now, but um, usually and throughout all semesters, honors students will get an earlier date than even the freshmen for signing up for classes. So you get first pick at classes, which is extremely nice. Uh, and other, other than that, there is options for honors classes, but these are usually the general classes such as chemistry or honors physics or honors um, math, usually. Great. All right. OK, we're getting to the end here. I want to make sure I, I cover everything. Sebastian is asking about internships. Are they with specific partner companies uh, that, that the college has, or can they be at any company? Um, they can be at any company, so we operate with both. We do have some premier partners that we partner with a lot, whether it's Stryker or Pfizer or Kellogg or some of our local uh, areas here like Eaton Corporation. They hire a lot of our students for internships. But then if you wanna go out and find an internship opportunity 
at a company elsewhere, we will assist you with that. And so we, it's a hybrid, we, we do both. And so we do have corporate partners, but we encourage you to find your fit. And so we're gonna help you find those through the internship process, okay? Uh, Ethan's asking about uh, some classes that he took. Uh, okay, I see, Ethan, uh, I would like for you to email me directly so I can answer this because these uh, the question you're asking uh, is very good, but it's very individual based, okay? Um, all right, Landon is asking about aerospace engineering. Is it a good segue for a career in flight test engineering? I honestly don't know how to answer that. Uh, it may be, um, but it's not flight. And so I think there's a distinct difference between flight and aerospace engineering. Now, through our College of Aviation, uh, you can do aviation flight science and learn how to fly. Uh, we focus more on the design, build, and structural integrity of aircraft that's gonna stay either in atmosphere or out of atmosphere. But how that prepares you to be a flight test, um, if you just wanna be an engineer, then yes, absolutely. But if you wanna be a pilot, uh, this is not gonna prepare you to be a pilot. That'd be through our College of Aviation. So I hope that helps, Landon. Sorry if that was unclear. All right, finally, uh, let me talk about where we are right now with the current status of the coronavirus and our operations uh, here at, at Western Michigan University and at the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences. Uh, we know that this is tough for a lot of people. It's tough for our students. Our students got sent home uh, pretty abruptly. Uh, and all of their um, delivery for class instruction was turned over to a virtual type environment. And that changed the metrics a lot as to how to learn, when to learn, where to learn, all of those things. So as we learn how to do better at that, we also wanna make sure that we are always making choices here that benefit our students the most. Our number one goal is to make sure that our students and their well-being are, uh, are, he are healthy. We wanna make sure that we keep everybody safe. That said, we are currently looking at several different options for how to open up full time in the fall, okay? Um, so option one would be that we open up just like normal and we just run right back into normal operating procedures. From there, we have a lot of different options. We may be moving to a hybrid model where some courses are done in person and some others are done uh, in an online virtual format. Um, but right now, we have no plans of closing campus. That may change at any time. Uh, and we're always gonna be monitoring what's happening in the state and talking to the medical um, pro uh, professionals and the experts on, on how best to, to move forward. I would anticipate that the picture will become much clearer as we move into May and get closer to June. And so um, I wish we had better answers right now. One of the things we've done in response to the answers that we don't have is we've moved our declaration date from May 1st back to June 1st to kind of provide that buffer so that hopefully the picture will become a lot more clear for you as you decide your next step in your college career. And so uh, keeping that in mind, uh, we're looking at all options right now. If you ever have any questions about that, if you go to the WMISH website, um, as a matter of fact, I know this is out of the ordinary, but I'm gonna to try to pull it up for you. And then you guys can see this real quick. There's a website called COVID-19, wmich.edu slash COVID-19. And I'm gonna share that with you right now. So if you go to this website, it will tell you all of the latest news and results and activities and announcements and press releases from our university about this. It has uh, resources for current students, for future students, for faculty and staff. Uh, this community is much more than just the 23,000 students that we have here, but we have thousands of professional personnel, faculty, part-time staff, full-time staff, uh, and we're all concerned about this. And so uh, I, I give kudos to the leadership at this university because they stepped right out on day one with messaging and communications to our staff. So if you want to keep it, uh, in touch with that, wmich.edu forward slash COVID-19 will get you there. And I highly encourage you to keep up with that. And I encourage all of our students and all of our community to do that as well. Okay, so I hope that helps uh, with that question. Um, we're going to make decisions in real time as we go. All right. Okay. This brings us to the end of our time block. We've got a few seconds left. Students, 
Anything for the good of the order before we say goodnight? <laughs> nope. <laughs> right. See you guys in the fall. Yes, we we can't wait uh, to see you in the fall. For if you're a high school senior, you've lost a lot, right? You've lost prom, you've lost grad bash, you've lost spring sports, you've lost your theater performances, you've lost a lot of time with friends and and, and teachers, and and we can't make up for all of that. But man, when we get started in the fall, we are going to try our best to make up for it. We're going to be excited to see you. Uh, there's going to be a lot of high fives when you get here, and we can't wait to see you all. Broncos are resilient, and we're going to get through this. Uh, and we're going to get through it together. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, take care. Go Broncos.